Hello, good morning students. My name is uh, Mr. Namaswa. I'm taking you through longitudes and latitudes. And uh, before we start, I want to remind you that uh, you have to log in into WhatsApp. You'll get a link that we have sent there for purposes of registration so that we take roll call to know who is with us and who has not joined us. So I'll give you two minutes to go to your WhatsApp groups. You'll find a link, enter your name and your admission number. Thank you. All right, now, uh, today we start a new topic called longitudes and latitudes, as you can see on the whiteboard. Now, basically, this is a topic that is going to involve a lot of observation, so you'll put a lot of emphasis on watching how I'm going to describe certain aspects of longitudes, latitudes, and so forth. Now, to begin as off, here with me is the globe or the earth, which, as we are told, it is a perfect sphere. Now, when you look at this, you will find some circles, or to you they may appear as lines. Now, if you look at this diagram here, is representing exactly what I'm holding. So there are some lines or circles that we'll find. Now, starting with this one here, that is at the center, which is the same as this one here. That is called the axis of the Earth. This line that runs from the North Pole to the South Pole. So on my model here, I'm talking about this being the North Pole, and this is the South Pole. So there's this line in between that we call the Greenwich Meridian, the GMT, and it is the one that is a center for giving time relative to this GMT, the line in the middle. Now, uh, you can see another line that is perpendicular to the axis of the Earth. This one here is the one that is the equator and it is the diameter of the Earth. Here we can see it is uh, the radius. That is half that line. That is called the equator. Now there are two types of planes on the Earth surface. We have the latitudes. Now the latitudes are parallel planes. Parallel planes to the equator and perpendicular to the axis of the earth. Now, when we draw, they may appear as lines, but in real sense, they are circles. So, if you look at this one here, right, it goes like this. It is a full or a complete circle. This is the latitude called equator. And it, its position is zero degrees. So the equator, which is our first latitude, is zero degrees. Now, it is the only great circle of the, all the latitudes. So the equator is a great circle, and it is the only one of all the great circles. Now we have another one here. We have another one here, as you can see. And there's another one down here. 
and there can be many other countless ones, all right? So, those latitudes above the equator, the latitudes above the equator are called as small circles. Why are they called small circles? Because their radius is not the same as the radius of the Earth. If you look at this one here, which is the equator, its radius, which is this one, or from here up to here, is the same as the radius of the Earth. That is why we say it is a great circle. But as you go up towards the north, right, you will find smaller circles. That's why we call them small circles. And their radius, like this one here, its radius is, uh, let's say, if we look at this latitude up here, its radius is from here up to here. All right? From here up to here. And as you can see, it is not the radius of the earth. We call it a small circle. Now, I said, as you move from the equator going up, if this is your compass. We say this is the North Pole. This is the South Pole. This is the, uh, this is the East. And this is the West. And we have said this is the equator. So as you go up, you will find latitudes. And how we name them, we are going to name them, let's say this one is 40 degrees north. Why? Because we are going towards the north. And if we have another one here, which we are going towards the south, it could be 60 degrees south. That is how we are going to label that latitude. I'll come back to this. Now, the other lines or planes that we have are what we call longitudes. These ones here, as you can see, latitudes are parallel to the equator. But these ones that pass through the North Pole, then they rotate all the way, are called longitudes. Let me just draw as a globe here that will present that information. So we have a circle here that is going to represent the earth. Uh, then we have the equator and we have the Greenwich meridian. So if I complete this, I'll have circles, then I have another latitude there, like that, then I may have another one there and complete them. Then down here, have another latitude like that and I'll have another small circle here. So those are latitudes. Then there are these lines that go through the North Pole and South Pole. Like that one. I'll have another one goes through both the North and the South. Like that one. And I'll have another one like that. All right? So, these ones are longitudes. These ones are longitudes. Then, these ones here are the latitudes. Those are the latitudes. So, as you can see from our diagram here, latitudes are towards the north or south. So when you give the position of a town, a village, or a city on the globe, you will either say it is so and so degrees north or south, representing the latitude. But for the longitudes, 
as you can see, they are towards the east and the west. So you may say 36 degrees north, I mean east, or 40 degrees west. That will be representing the position of a point, the longitude. Now, these uh, latitudes above the equator, as we said, are small circles. And so if you are to find their radius, uh, it will be from that point to that point. And as you can see, it is a small radius, not the same as the radius of the earth. Then as you go further up, this one here will even have a much smaller radius than the other latitudes. But for the longitudes, remember we said they all pass through the North Pole and the South Pole. So all the longitudes are great circles. So in an exam situation, you may be told to find the distance along a small circle. And here I would be looking at what? A latitude. So if this is your latitude, and we are told there's a point here, and there's another point there, and you are told to find the distance between them, then it means you are calculating the arc length of this point, whose radius is from here, the radius of the small latitude. Now let's look at uh, some illustrations here. So as you can see here, I have a globe. Then we are trying to look at a latitude. What is a latitude? We have said latitude is the angle of a point above or below the equator. All right? So you can see we have that angle theta and the angle phi there. That represents the latitude. So it is the angle of a point above or below the equator. Then we talk of small circles and we are saying these are parallel to the equator are called parallels of the latitude. Then uh, they are the angle between the small circle and the equator. Then um, this one here is an example where we are told um, latitude 50 degrees. I'll illustrate it here. Latitude 30, which is uh, south. So we have a latitude here. We are saying now that is 30 degrees. Let me use a different color. 30 degrees. Like that. That is latitude 30 degrees. Then uh, we want to look at the angular distance for angles on opposite sides of 
the equator. How can we find the angular distance for angles on opposite sides of the equator? Now, this can be found by adding the angles uh, if they are on opposite sides of the equator. So, here we are seeing that 1 is uh, 50 degrees north, while point Q here is 30 degrees towards the south. So if you want to find the angular distance between them, you want to find the distance between those two points, then we are going to add those two, 50 degrees plus 30 degrees to give you 80 degrees. That becomes the angular distance between the two points. As you can see, it's illustrated by this rare arc there. On the other hand, if we want to find uh, angles that are on different sides, the angular distance for angles on the same side of the equator, how do we find them? If they are on the same side of the equator, like this, so we have your sphere there, which represents the earth. Then we have the equator there. Then we have one latitude there, which I'll call A, uh, 60 degrees north. Then I have another one here, point B, which I'll call 80 degrees north. And this is the at center. So if we have that angle there and we have that angle there so let's say this angle here is 20 degrees and the all of this one here is 70 I mean, not 70, but okay, this one here is 60, and this one is 80. Then we want to find the angular distance between point B and A. They are on the same side of the equator, meaning they are both towards the north. So to find the angular distance, we'll subtract 60 from 80, which will give us 80 minus 60 degrees to give us 20, if they are on the same side of the equator. Now we'll do an example to help us understand what we have been discussing. We have that question that I'm going to work it out to help you understand how to find distance between two points. Uh, now the question reads, a globe representing the earth has a radius of 0 0.2 meters. Points P, 60 degrees north and 140 degrees east, and Q, 60 degrees north and 120 degrees west are marked on the globe. If O is the center of the latitude 60 degrees north, find the area of the minor sector O, P, Q. I repeat again. A globe representing the Earth has a radius of 0 0.2 meters. Points P, 60 degrees north, 140 degrees east, and point Q, which is 60 degrees north and 120 degrees west, are marked on the globe. If O is the center of the latitude 60 degrees north, find the area of the minor sector. All right. Let me illustrate this for you. 
So we have the Greenwich Meridian, the GMT or the axis of the Earth. Then we have the equator here. Then we have latitude. One is there. And there is another latitude there. We say latitudes are complete circles that represent points on the Earth's surface. Then we have longitudes, we have that one, and there is another longitude. Like that. So we are told a globe representing the earth. So we are talking about a model of the globe. It's just a representation, like this one here, it's just a model. So we are saying its radius is 0 0.2 meters. So this is the radius of our globe model, 0 0.2 meters. Then we have two points, 60 degrees north and 140 degrees east. So when you talk about north, we are talking about from the equator going up. Then we are talking about east. So we are talking about north. East. So this might be our point P, which is 60 degrees north and 140 degrees east. That is our point P. Then point Q is 60 degrees north. What does that mean? It's on the same latitude as point P. So it will be along this latitude, but 122 degrees west. So it is moving towards the west. So that would be my point Q, which is 60 degrees north and 120 degrees west. So as you can see, they are on the same latitudes, but different longitudes. All right, one is on 140 degrees east, and Q is on 120 degrees west. Then, we are told the radius, the radius of our globe is 0 0.5 meters. Then we are told O is the center of the latitude 60. So latitude 60 is this one here that completes our circle. So its radius, which is now uh, this one here, we are told this is the radius, point O is the center of that latitude. Let me distinguish it in red. Yes, so that is the latitude, 60 degrees north. And we are told its red, its uh, center is O. So the question asks, find the area of the minor sector O, P, Q. So here is O, here is P, and there is Q there. O, P, and Q. Q is here. So we want to find the area of the minor sector. Now, I told you that when you are talking of uh, two points, on different sides of the equator, we want to find the angular distance, we add the angles. So here you can see one is 140 degrees east, the other one is 120 degrees west. What does that tell you? They are on opposite sides. One is east, the other one is west. So to find our angle in between, we'll take 140 plus 120 which will give us 260 degrees. So, we are having a complete circle, which is now our latitude, and point P is here, 60 degrees north, and 
140 degrees east, while point Q is here, 60 degrees north and 120 degrees west. Then that is the center, and uh, we are told what? We want to find the area of the minor sector. This is O, P, Q. So we want to find the area of that sector there. And we have said, uh, we are told, now this is the major sector and the minor sector is there. So when you see 140 plus 120, then it tells you this angle here is 260 degrees. And that obviously is more than half a circle. So this one represents the major sector. So we want now the angle up here. How do you get that? Angles at a point add up to 360 degrees. So if this one is 360, then the other one will be 360 minus 260, which gives you 100 degrees. So this is our eta, 100 degrees. Now we want to find the area of the minor sector. Now, when you want to find the area of the minor sector, we'll have to find the radius of this latitude, which is not the same as the radius of the Earth. This is a minor radius. So, R, which is now the, uh, the radius of this latitude, will be given by R cos theta. Where R is now the bigger radius, which is the radius of the Earth. In our case here, it is uh, 0 0.5, we are told it is 0 0.2 meters, all right? Now we want to find small r. So, small r is equal to 0 0.2, which is the radius of the Earth, times cosine of uh, this angle here, the latitude is 60 degrees. So, cos 60, and uh, that should give you R. And therefore, area of sector, as you remember from our Form 2 work, is given by theta over 360 times pi R squared. So, the angular distance between the two, we have said is 100 degrees over 360 times our pi is 22 over 7, and radius is uh, this one here, 0 0.2 times cos 60 squared. Um, Now, uh, so we are going to use this formula to find the area of the minor sector, which is 100 over 360. 100 being the angular distance between points P and Q, then 22 over 7 times uh, 0 0.2 times cos 60 squared, and that would give us the area. Now we want to do, we want to look at a second example here. We want to look at another example too. We are told an aircraft flies from a point A, one degree, 15 minutes south, at seven degrees east to a point B directly north of A. The arc AB subtends an angle of 45 degrees at the center of the earth. From B, the aeroplane flies due west to a point C on longitude 23 degrees west. Take the radius of the earth as 6,370 kilometers. A states the location of B. Okay, a 
I'll illustrate that from our blog. So we are told an aircraft flies from a point A, 1 degree, 15 minutes south. Now we'll have to remember from our knowledge in Form 3, in trigonometry, that 15 minutes equals to 1 degree. I mean uh, 60 minutes is equals to 1 degree. So if 60 minutes is 1 degree, what about 15 minutes? And that would be equal to 15 over 60 times 1, that gives you uh, 1 over 4 or 0 0.25 degrees. So, this point here, A, is going to be given by 1.25 degrees south at 7 degrees east. So we want to locate it on our globe, 1.25 degrees south. So as you can see, this is the GMT, this one here is the equator. So our point A is towards the south, so we are going down. So it is on this latitude here, this is the latitude 1.25 degrees south. Then the longitude position is at 7 degrees east, so this is the east side. So, this is our point A, 1.25 degrees south at 7 degrees east. This is the position of A. Then we are told, uh, this aeroplane flies to a point directly north of A. So here it is. Then it flies towards the north, so it is going up. Come, it flies along this longitude up to that point there, we'll call B, but we don't know which latitude it is, but the longitude of course will be the same. So let's say the latitude is X and the longitude is the same at 7 degrees east. Then we are told, the arc AB, AB, which is now this one here, the arc AB subtends an angle of 45 degrees at the center. So this is the scenario that we have. So the angular distance between A and B is 45 degrees. Now the question asks, uh, state the location of B. So we know the location in terms of longitude but we don't know the position in terms of the latitude the longitude is at seven degrees east but we don't know the latitude but we are told the distance the angular distance between the two is 45 degrees and that is the angle subtended at the center of the earth so how do we get point x we say if these two positions are on opposite sides of the equator, to find the angular distance, we do what? We add the two. So we'll say 1.25 degrees plus x should give us 45 degrees. Then make x the subject. So we have x is equal to 45 minus 1.25 give us 43.75 degrees. So that becomes the position of point B. That's 43.75 degree, 43 degrees north, because it is towards the north, and that's 7 degrees east. 
That is the first part of our equation, and that gives you two marks. Then the question goes ahead to say, from point B, the aeroplane flies due west. So it is at this point, and it is flying west. Meaning what? It is flying. It is uh, flying along this latitude. Uh, it flies west to a point C on longitude 23. All right. So it comes up to this point here. That becomes our point C. The longitude is 23. And latitude we know is 43 point, this one here, x, 43.75 and 23 degrees west. That is the longitude position. We are told the radius of the earth is 6,370 kilometers. Find the distance in kilometers traveled by the aeroplane between B and C. So we want this distance here. Okay, so that is distance along a small circle. All right, so point B is here and point C is here. So we want to find this distance between them, distance along a small circle. We say distance along a small circle given by theta over 360, then 2 times pi, then r cos cos alpha where r is the radius of the earth so if we substitute our values uh, we know that the angular distance the angular distance between b and c they are on opposite sides of the equator so one is uh, 23 degrees west the other one is 37 degrees west so we'll add the two 37 plus 23 to give us 60 so our theta is 60 so we have 60 over 360 times 2 pi is 22 over 7 big R is 6370 and cos 43.75, that is the latitude angle, 43.75 degrees. Then you solve that and it gives you your three marks. And that brings us to the end of our lesson today. Uh, we'll go to the Google Forms, you will get some questions on this topic. Thank you.